Safety is essential to all of us. However, in our everyday lives, in our homes and offices, walking the streets of our cities or traveling somewhere, do we ever stop to think about what keeps us safe? What would happen if a fire broke out somewhere near? Are the buildings in which we live equipped to safeguard us from fire or smoke? We may not be aware that we are unsafe. Thankfully, there are professionals who ask themselves these questions, who look for the answers to ensure our personal protection. BearCorp is one such company. We have been delivering safety for nearly 30 years. We produce passive fire protection systems and we continue to develop our solutions for smoke ventilation. To test their performance under fire conditions, we travel to Belgium. Just 10 kilometers from Bruja is the town of Zedolgum, home to the West Flanders Training Center for Emergency Services, including the fire service. We are in a training and research center for the Belgian fire service. This center incorporates Mercor's natural smoke ventilation systems. This is a warehouse built to resemble a real room. It features MCR lamb louvered smoke vents which utilize a pneumatic control system. There are two ways to activate these vents automatically by the thermal detector located right next to the vents or manually using the manual control points installed on the walls of the building. This lab setting allows us to conduct various fire tests for which we've developed a number of scenarios to analyze. We're going to test the performance of our vents and of the entire smoke exhaust ventilation system for this type of building. We also have the choice of testing the smoke exhaust ventilation system with or without an inlet air supply. We're preparing for the tests. This is one of the things that we can do here at the training center in Belgium. Our first aim is to check our knowledge in a test during a fire with a low heat release rate, which will not exceed 2,000 kilowatts. The smoke vents shouldn't be activated by the thermal detector, as we assume that the temperature below the ceiling in the test room will not exceed the set limit of 68 degrees Celsius. At the same moment, the real challenge will be the rapidly spreading smoke. Let's start the tests. We'll be taking part in the first series of tests now. We're testing the effectiveness of the smoke exhaust ventilation system in a warehouse. We want to verify our assumptions whether the smoke vents open individually activated by the thermal detectors. This test is meant to simulate a fire in a 12 meter high warehouse. In order to reach the estimated heat release rate of 2000 kilowatts, we have prepared two separate fires. The main flammable material is plastic, specifically polyurethane foam from mattresses. We want to verify the assumption we made that smoke vents using thermal detectors set to a 68 degrees Celsius tripping temperature and sensitivity equal to or greater than 80 won't open under conditions of a low heat release rate fire. Once the fire starts, smoke quickly fills the room. Even when the smoke layer drops to the floor, the temperature below the ceiling still hasn't reached 68 degrees Celsius. As we assumed, the thermal detectors do not activate any of the vents of the test. Therefore, we make the decision to open a single smoke vent using a control panel. We can see that the smoke extraction is too slow. Only after opening the remaining smoke vents and air supply vents can we clear the room of smoke. To sum it up, the first series of tests confirmed our assumptions. 
opening the smoke vents using only thermal detectors to detect that a certain temperature has been exceeded at roof level is ineffective. Even the activation of a single smoke vent has no impact on the fire conditions in the building. The opening of a single smoke vent should automatically lead to the opening of the remaining vents within the smoke zone. Only then can the smoke exhaust ventilation system work effectively, ensuring suitable working conditions for the fire and rescue units. So uh, this building that you can see here, we have built it for uh, the Belgian government, uh, especially for the province of uh, West Flanders, who has uh, done the investigation for, uh, for this building. We have started uh, a few years ago to make a, a study of the project. And for that, we have visited a lot of uh, similar buildings uh, in uh, Europe. So at that moment, we have seen so uh, different solutions for test sensors for the fireware. So it is an educational center for the Belgian fireware's. So the different um, teams come here to test. We're moving on to the next series of tests. This time, we're going to test the effectiveness of the smoke exhaust ventilation system in a warehouse, assuming that all the smoke vents within one smoke zone open simultaneously and that the air supply vents open manually after a delay. This test is meant to simulate a fire in a 12-meter high warehouse. In order to reach the estimated heat release rate of 2,000 kilowatts, we've prepared two separate fire sources. The main flammable material is again a polyurethane foam used in mattresses. In the course of the test, we want to verify the performance of the smoke exhaust ventilation system, involving all the smoke vents open simultaneously within a single smoke zone. At that time, the air supply vents don't open or are opened manually with a delay. Three minutes after starting the fire, the smoke layer reaches floor level. After four minutes and 30 seconds from starting the fire, we open all exhaust vents within a single smoke zone to extract the smoke from the building. We can see that after opening the smoke vents, they do extract the smoke, but the system isn't very effective. For this type of fire test, the system is unable to provide a smoke-free layer. After about six and a half minutes from fire initiation, we open the air supply vent on one side of the warehouse. In each test, after the air supply is opened, the smoke exhaust ventilation system starts working more effectively so that after about a minute, visibility is regained in the room. To sum it up, automatically opening all the exhaust vents within a single smoke zone but without the activation of the air supply vents makes the smoke exhaust ventilation system ineffective. It is unable to extract smoke sufficiently to compensate the delay in activating the system to ensure a smoke-free layer. Only after opening a suitable number of air supply vents of the required area does the system begin to work more effectively, providing good working conditions for the fire and rescue units. This training center in Zeelheim for the fire department was for us as an architect very atypical to design. It's not a common building, normally we build something and we hope that there will never be a fire in it. But over here it was quite the opposite. We had to make a building to make a building that people put in fire and people have to train in it. So even if there's a fire in the building, the people who are training in it, they have to be safe in it. So for us it was a very hard exercise to design this building. Let's get back to testing our devices under fire conditions. Now we're going to test the effectiveness of the smoke exhaust ventilation system in a three-story atrium. This test is meant to simulate a fire in a commercial area located on the floor of a three-story 12-meter high atrium. The estimated heat release rate is 1,500 kilowatts and the main flammable material is plastic.
In the course of the test, we want to check the performance of the smoke exhaust ventilation system in a situation where, within one smoke zone, all the smoke vents and air supply vents located on one side of the room open automatically. After 1 minute and 20 seconds from the fire initiation, the smoke layer breaches the floor level. After 1 minute and 35 seconds, all smoke vents within a single smoke zone open automatically. The purpose of these tests is to simulate vent opening by the fire alarm system, activated by two smoke detectors. An air supply vent is also opened on one side of the room. After another 30 seconds, the other air supply vent is opened. We can see that the smoke exhaust ventilation system is working. However, the smoke venting process is not very effective. With the assumed type of test fire and the strong wind during this series of tests, it takes five minutes to regain visibility. During the third series of tests, we observed turbulence appearing within the area of the smoke venting. This was caused by the strong wind that accompanied our tests and the air supply vents being placed only on one side of the room, also too close to the fire source. In Belgium, in new industrial type buildings, it's compulsory to have a smoke and heat control system, which is kind of new. Such a smoke and heat control system, it allows to have a smoke layer at a certain height. So the idea is that the smoke layer doesn't descend below a certain height, keeping a smoke-free environment. Normally, when the fire service arrives at the building, the smoke layer will have banged down up until the ground floor, uh, creating circumstances with almost zero visibility, some heat, might be moderate, might be high, it's difficult to do firefighting. The goal of the new Belgian legislation is to have smoke and heat control systems and to create a smoke-free zone so the fire service can enter the building and go towards the fire and extinguish it. This type of infrastructure with the smoke and heat control system installed, it allows firefighters to train for that kind of fires. Let's continue our tests. We're testing the effectiveness of the smoke exhaust ventilation system in a warehouse, assuming that all the smoke vents within one smoke zone open simultaneously along with the air supply vents. This test is meant to simulate a fire in a 12 meter high warehouse. In order to reach the estimated heat release rate of 2000 kilowatts, we have prepared two separate fire sources. Again, the main flammable material is plastic, specifically polyurethane foam used in mattresses. In the course of the test, we want to check the performance of a smoke exhaust ventilation system where all the smoke vents and air supply vents open simultaneously within one smoke zone. The smoke layer reaches floor level three minutes after fire initiation. We activate all vents within the smoke zone using a control panel. After four minutes and 20 seconds from fire initiation, we also open the air supply vents on both sides of the building. The simultaneous opening of all smoke and air supply vents leads to the effective extraction of the smoke, while the system for the assumed fire test is capable of providing a smoke-free zone about six minutes from fire initiation. We've proven that automatically opening all smoke vents within one smoke zone and air supply vents simultaneously on both sides of the building leads to the effective operation of the smoke exhaust ventilation system. It's capable of removing smoke sufficiently well to compensate the delay in launching the system and to provide a smoke-free layer. Opening the air supply vents on both sides of the building prevents turbulence from developing inside the smoke ventilation area. Smoke does not spread to the other smoke zones. Yeah. 
Let's sum up. The tests confirm that even fires with a low heat release rate that generate a lot of smoke can cause great danger to people and property in a building and to the building itself. They might lead to putting the building out of operation. In the course of the test, we prove that only the automatic activation of the smoke exhaust ventilation system, understood as the simultaneous opening of smoke and air supply ventilators, can protect a building from damage and allow the smoke exhaust ventilation system to operate effectively. We spent two days on intensive fire tests, studying the performance of the MCR LAM smoke vents. The tests were made possible thanks to the generosity of the West Flanders Rescue Services Training Center in Zedelgum and dedication and support of the local instructors. We say goodbye to Bruges, feeling excited and full of new experience. Unlike the thousands of tourists who visit this place every year to stroll along the streets of this charming medieval town that prides itself on its beer, chocolate and lace, we came to test the knowledge of our industry, fire engineering, in practical scenarios. What we studied and recorded here will help us to expand our knowledge and introduce new solutions on the fire protection market.